a brand new archaeology TV show just dropped on Comedy Central, starring Andy Samberg of Brooklyn Nine-Nine and SNL fame. The show is called Dig Man, and I know very little about it. The bit that I know is that apparently it's like a world where archaeologists are treated as like hyper celebrities. That's what I heard. So it's like, that's that's the shtick. He's an archaeologist in a world where they're treated very, very well. So uh, honestly, I don't know what I would have wrong with this. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what I would possibly hate about a show like that. I would love that, but we'll see how it ends up being. I am um, I am nervous. It is a, it is an entertaining archaeology show, which means that it's definitely going to fall into tropes. It's going to spill so hard into tropes that we're going to be we're going to be Indiana Jones and the Crystal Sculling it over here. Jeez, I can't even say that without cringing. So, it's time to see if the boys over at Comedy Central and Andy Sandberg put up a show that does the facts or the fiction. Psst. Do you want to see my greatest treasure? <laughs> It's, it's your subscription to this channel. That's right, every person who subscribes to my channel brings me one step closer to being able to bring more archaeology, gaming, and meme content to your screens. So go ahead, scroll down, and click that subscribe button today, and you too can find your wildest treasure. I am uh, excited to see what uh, comes out of this. I think it's going to be super silly. Really, the big question here is, is it going to push ancient alien theories? Is it going to set the scene of archaeologists or portray archaeologists in a way that's going to promote and reinforce like harmful thinking and pseudoscience? That's that's what my question is. Is it going to be the kind of thing where it's like, oh, it's t like it's railing against the establishment of archaeologists and like, oh, all the all the stuffy know-it-alls in the in the universities don't know what they're talking about because, you know, they they do they go to school for it. And so if he's like kind of perpetuating that mentality, that's going to be a little unfortunate because it's just going to make more people think that way. I said it in the title. If I see an ancient alien, I'm rioting. I'm coming for your daytime Emmy. <laughs> Does he have a daytime Emmy? No, never mind. He just has a regular Emmy for outstanding music and lyrics. He can keep that one. Mount Huicoran, one of history's most lethal supervolcanoes. In 200 BC, a series of deadly eruptions had decimated the local tribe. So the elders turned to the great artist. He's definitely doing this on purpose, but he's doing his Nick Cage impression. Andy Samberg sounds like he's doing his Nicolas Cage impression when he's doing this, and that has to be a National Treasure reference. But it's but it's funny to hear. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn on subtitles. Okay. The gods, the yep. molten idol. It's Indiana beautiful. Jones. And yet, not so beautiful as you, love of my life, keeper and tender two of my loins. I thought you'd be more oh God. Because you have no appreciation for true beauty, Zane! You know, legend has it that removing the idol will cause Quiquaran to erupt. Legends are rarely real. Oh, I don't want to die! Get the out of the way! I guess that legend was real. Shut the fuck up, Zane! Sweeper! Okay. Energy. Energy at 11. Uh... Can confirm that's exactly how I would act. Meet me on the God. other side of the jungle. Well, that jungle's filled with Corpus Floraria. Oh my God. Okay, yeah. So I was right. This is going. This is going so hard in the adventure tropes. <laughs> I need the candy. We're we're two minutes. We're two minutes in. I need I need the candy. A good chocolate bar. The natives are restless. Hello, I'm an attorney representing the Mondonesian tribe. We respectfully ask that you don't steal the molten idol as it's a culturally significant. We're off the hook, and we'll never have to think about the questions they were raising or ponder the ethics of what we're doing ever again. Power slide! I feel like that was offensive. Don't panic. <laughs> Although, I will say in that context, power to them for having at least an attorney to represent the tribal interests in 2011 because. They weren't always getting that back then. 
What the hell are you doing? Oh, I'm taking the idol. It'll be my first acquisition as the new head. Ark of the Met. But we work for the Smithsonian. Not anymore, Rippy. I'm sick of you. Oh, my God. If they're going to take the trip, if they're going to say that the Smithsonian and the Met are like competing factions, like gangs, this is absolutely bonkers. That's so funny and dumb. And dumb. Consider this my resignation. F that, you're fired. Fine. Have fun paying my unemployment. No, 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 you quit. Everyone heard it. <laughs> no, I will not let you die. I will not let you die! It's been 12 years since Rip Digman let his wife Bella die. In that time, Rip's former assistant, Oof. Troy, has gone on to become the greatest archie in the world. Well, Rip, who was fired by the Smithsonian, is now a has-been, a nobody, a real where-are-they-now situation. Oh, so I do like that he calls them archies. I don't like how they spelled it. <laughs> they call them archies because that's like a lot of archaeologists call each other archies. I, I was never, I'm not much of the, I'm not much in the archie camp. I just don't, I just don't say it. I say arcs. I'll say like, yeah, other arcs will do this. But a lot of people say, oh yeah, other archies. So that's kind of cute that they threw that in. So remember at the beginning where I said this was probably just going to be like a high PG-13 show? I'm taking that back. <laughs> Morning, Agatha. Any museums call for an archie? No museum has called in 10 years, Rip. Well, excuse me for being hopeful! There's no need... Okay, that's very realistic. <laughs> Museums won't hire archaeologists. Museums don't hire archaeologists because museums only hire people with museum studies degrees. I know because I've tried. I worked as a volunteer at the Smithsonian, but I was not an employee of the Smithsonian. I've seen postings from museums for archaeological collections curators, and they will not consider archaeologists for that position. They're only taking people with museum studies degrees for an archaeological collections curator. It's like we're the one we're the ones who pull it out of the ground and the museums won't hire people. Why? It's a lot the same way. It's it's for a lot of the same reasons why libraries won't hire anybody that don't have a librarian studies degree to like make sure that people who work for those types of jobs can get them. But what ends up happening is then they end up just having these postings go up for like two years and so then these museum collections just end up getting le like left in the dust not processed correctly literally just mountains of artifacts unlabeled in boxes in the backs of like museum halls and this isn't the case everywhere right and I, i'm sure that and, and like the smithsonian is probably different the smithsonian probably has plenty of very high i mean they know that they have very highly trained staff but there's a lot of other like smaller museums that for some reason yeah they say like must have a degree in museum studies or like a museum studies certificate program it's super strict i don't know it's crazy need to yell you're right my many apologies you're just lonely you should start dating again thanks agatha but the only dating i'm interested in is carbon dating that's a fire line that is a fire line. The Holy <laughs> Grail, the term people use to describe the coolest thing in every other profession, is that thing in archaeology. Oh, oh. Yes, Saltine. Have you ever tried to find the Holy Grail? Well, every shovel bum worth their salt has given it a shot, but its location is archaeology's greatest mystery. They say that just one sip from it can heal any ailment. A shovel bum is another term, so I'm glad that he used the term shovel bum. That's a real term. Shovel bum is, is like entry level arcs. Like the fur, like any any field technician is a shovel bum. Sure. Great. No need to invite me to any parties this weekend, classmates. I've got plans. Eat a pile of shit, nerd. I'd rather sit <laughs> through said shit to discover secrets of the past. Wow, you're awfully cheery, aren't you? Chris was a shovel bum. I was a shovel bum. I'll probably be a shovel bum again. Shovel bumming is like great betweener work because it's short term. You only ever, you know, a lot of those projects you only go for like, you know. A couple days up to a couple weeks. Another rum chata. Neat. Professor! Okay. Archaeologists drink a lot, but we don't drink rum chattas. We just drink rum. Or just, <laughs> or just you know. Sour mash out of a plastic bottle. Please. Bring me as your assistant Archie. Ha! No dice. Rip Dugan rolls solo. But the Archie Union Jesus, said you have to have an assistant. Ugh, stupid Union coming up with stupid rules so I don't die. But I'm still not gonna... 
Union? An Ark Union? I wish there was an archaeologist union. Are you kidding me? Do you know the lengths that our profession... Do you know the lengths that our profession had to go to just to get guaranteed hotels paid for or travel expenses or per diems? We don't have a union. We've been fighting for unions for decades since before I even thought I would be an archaeologist. Oh my god. This really is a fantasy alternate universe. <laughs> But I've wanted to be an archie all my life. Okay. I'm an amateur inventor. Okay. I love Latin. Or cool. should I say, amo linguam latinam? <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't get it. Oh, and my parents disown me because they hate her. I don't speak Latin. A de facto orphan. You spin a good yarn, kid, but I'm still not sure we connect on a cosmic level at the base of the neural cue. Avatar F. The event starts in 15 <laughs> minutes, and you have to have an assistant. You're hired. <laughs> that is actually how archaeologists get hired. Literally, like, I have had so many times where I've put in a job app, but, like, a job posting has gone up, like, within two days. And I put up the application, and they're like, when can you start? And I'm like, oh, I can start whenever you need. They go, great. We'll see you Monday. <laughs> Be at this hotel at this time on Sunday afternoon. You start at 8 a.m. Monday. <laughs>
like you know i did viking archaeology i don't know the migratory patterns of like puffins are there puffins there there's puffins in iceland i don't know migratory patterns of puffins i'm basically a, good i'm basically a biologist yeah hey that tree could be a bad house just leave that uh, leave that the fuck alone <laughs> Was here, but he didn't find any hat. He did honorary biologist. Robes, though. <laughs> Classic Arky move. Never leave a place empty-handed. Did he say? We're that is a horrible mindset. No, no, no. Frequently leave a place empty-handed. A, you don't want to find stuff because that's more paperwork. And and oh, Jesus, we don't just steal. We don't just steal stuff. Looks like we're heading to Venezuela. What the f*** is here? But he didn't find a hat. Stole a bunch of secret ceramics, though. That's Wendell for you. So cool. Did he say we're- Wendell, stop stealing sh from in like indigenous cultures! How hard is this, Wendell? Looks like we're heading to Istanbul. Yep, he was here and swiped our Byzantine sarcophagus. <laughs> I love that! Rip, that's not good behavior! He said he was hungry and I told him- Thank you! She gets it! Damn. There's a Hardee's nearby. Looks like we're heading to Hardee's. Yeah, he was here. Why is there a valley girl in Istanbul? Attitude. It's a mirror that when a cat looks into it, it reflects the image of a lion. I based it on a post. A Hardee's in Istanbul? Okay, so there is no... There is no Hardee's in Istanbul, but there is a Carl's Jr. So... So we are going to have to dock them points for inaccuracy on that. It was very easy. It, it really was just a quick Google search for them to learn that there's no Hardee's in Istanbul and they could have put a Carl's Jr. instead. I mean, it's close, I guess. But yeah, I agree. The show is not completely accurate. No. Um, frankly, I'm disappointed in the Comedy Central team. I feel like this is something that they could have done a little bit better. I, I Andy Sandberg for an Emmy Award winner, I expected better. Uh, ah. Now we see how Wendell Banks met his fate. Looks like a How did he become a skeleton that quick? Did you guys I see that? Got him. He must have been How did he go How did he go to 100% skeleton in like a couple weeks? I mean, I get that it's like a jungle and there's animals. But like, dang. And here it is. Oh God, it's filled with snakes. Let me guess, you hate snakes? Nope, I love them. Oh. Yep, I love them and I always have because I'm my own unique character. Okay. I'm not based on anyone else. Didn't think you were. <laughs> and since I am legally my own person who is not afraid of snakes, I'll just reach into this alcove and move some of them aside. Yep, pardon me, nice snakes. Hi there. <laughs> and pull the lever. I can confirm I am also not afraid of snakes. I have run into snakes on I mean, I am I am healthily cautious of snakes. If I stumbled upon a venomous snake by surprise, I would step back and cuss. But I am not like paralyzed by snakes. I watched a snake battle a lamprey on a flooded uh, boardwalk. A crew of construction workers, and they were betting money on which one would win. I didn't bet. I didn't have any money. <laughs> Who won? Uh, I believe. I think both slithered away alive. Um, but I think the lamprey was pretty effed up. I wasn't there when the crew decided which one actually won. Untouched civilization. These Neanderthals could be a whole tribe of missing lakes. And look, I spy with my little archie eye, Hammurabi's hat. That's it. But what we the f to fall asleep, then we can sneak in. How did it get here? here Rip, look, they're all staring at the hat. Oh. Put it on. Mm, that's interesting. Oh. 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 It almost seems like they won't attack when I'm wearing the hat. Yeah, when you're wearing it, they clearly worship you. Now, let's get out of here. Whoa. So, I know that they made them Neanderthals, and are like, oh yeah, this is like an, un an undiscovered tribe of Neanderthals, but... I feel like maybe saying like an undiscovered... Uh, what is this, like Amazonian or uh, uh, Asian tribe? And like kind of equating them to like dumb Neanderthals 
maybe isn't the most sensitive thing to be doing in 2023. Just a thought, like maybe these cultures are not intellectually less advanced than us because biologically we're the same species and they have the same brain capacity and ability to develop culture that we do. And yeah, just because they don't have technology doesn't mean that they're not, doesn't mean that they're dumb right? They survived in those crazy environments without technology. You have to be smart to do that. Oh, wait a minute. They worship me? Yes, now let's go. Actually, I'm gonna hang here a while and uh, see how this plays out. Hey, Saltine, where's Rip? Oh my god, he's dead! What? No, he's just not coming. I'm sorry, that was confusing. Oh, thank god! <laughs> that was extremely confusing. Okay, I think I know how to convince Rip to come back. Bro. Saltine, stop. We can't make him leave. But what about the Arky competition? The Arky world treated Rip like dog sh**. They stomped on him, then they chewed him up and spit him out. Just like you do with dog sh**. So if he's found a place where he feels happy and respected, who are we to ask him to give that up? That's a good point. I just hope he's, to quote Pharrell, happy. <laughs> Where's Rip? To quote Pharrell. Oh my god, he's dead! Oh my Come god! Come on! You guys gotta stop doing that! So, uh, you rescuing me or what? Heck yeah, I am. It's time for salty ghoul inventions. Oh, damn it, not the cat mirror. I made a few modifications. Now it doesn't just reflect, it also projects. He's got a cat. Check it! Holy sh**. <laughs> this way! It works! Okay, I gotta ask, where did Fleety find a kitten in the middle of the jungle? Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> Fleety, you suck! <laughs> uh, that's not good! <clears throat> uh, okay, that's normal. Said no one ever. <laughs> Let's move! Can we agree said no one ever jokes are like 20 years dead like when was the last time somebody actually laughed at a said no one ever joke oh ho, ho, yeah i laughed at that joke said no one ever the one how'd you even find the scene you on it and you kept it anyway because you're a hoarder it was a homing device oh the fucking car unbelievable man i'll oh, just put him in this pocket though oh i knew when you guys <laughs> been searching for that hat so i figured i'd be like you and follow the trail of my male mentor wow zane you are a world-class bum nickel Rippy. Really hurt my feelings. Hmm. It did? Bum no, I was being sarcastic. Your dry British wit makes it impossible to tell. Now, the hat. Okay, fine. You win, Zane. No, Zane Troy, if you want to take that hat from Rip, you're going to have to go through his temporary assistant. Oh my god. Oh, good. It's just a trank. Ring a bell, Rip. Anywho, antidotes on the beach. Two clicks that away. I'm headed this away. You get it. Thank you. I just want to say I would never have found the hat without my old friend, Rip Dickman. Well. That sucks. Thanks for saving my life, Rip. Of course, Salty. Okay. There was never a question of what I would do. What? I want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> I dragged you into what? all of this and it amounted to nothing. I hope your next assistant will make you proud. She already has. Surprise! I'm hiring you as my permanent assistant. Seriously? But we lost the hat because of me. We lost the hat because of Zane. But you, you helped me get back on the proverbial Arky horse. I know your family mm. doesn't approve of your lifestyle, Saltine, but they can go to hell and burn there for a thousand years. Years. As we laugh at them, yeah. spray our hot frothy oak piss all over their charred corpses with the force of a thousand what? beer bloated stallions. Oak piss. That was a really nice speed. So, what's next for us, boss? I'll be in touch. Rot row. I trust this will be to your liking. No. Rip, I'm so glad. No. Digman Digital Game Assistant? Oh, he has a secret chamber. Hey, babe. Oh, my God. Things are finally looking up. Soon I'm going to find the grail and bring you back. But in the meantime, hey, Mr. Freeze, his wife. Being faithful because the only dating I'm interested in is carbon dating. Not, not as, not as funny the second time. Great joke the first time. Not as good the second. 
Well, guys, that was the end of the episode of Digman. Thoughts. I there's definitely parts of it that I laughed at. There's definitely things that were funny. There were I liked that they used a lot of like terminology that archaeologists will use, like calling people archies and and shovel bums. But this is in no way an archaeology show. This is a this is an adventure show. It's another adventure show. He didn't do a single site delineation, not a single shovel test. He didn't make any one calls. This is all adventure. This is pure hack and smash, looting. It's what everybody who's not an archaeologist thinks our job is, like gathering stuff and giving them to museums. We don't do that. Like, that's not how it works. Like, museums, a lot of times, don't end up with the artifacts that we discover. Technically, in the United States, all the artifacts that come out of the ground belong to the landowners. So unless you're digging on public property, you're not, like, the artifacts are not going to a museum. They're, like, unless they're on federally owned land. We might hold on to it for the project duration, but then when the project's over and, like, all of the site recordation has been done and submitted to the State Historic Preservation Office, all of those artifacts go back to the landowner. It's their property. Which, A, is bonkers. Because a lot of times it's Native American artifacts that are that are being discovered, but they belong to the often Euro-descended people that live on that property. But I digress. They also just, like, it, like he just goes wantonly around different countries. Like, this is always a thing in archaeology and adventure shows. They just wantonly go to different countries and just, like, take stuff. Just leave with it. It's like, that's not how it works. You don't just get to go to other countries and just, like, take all their stuff and bring it back to your museum. Not anymore. We're not 1800s British Museum anymore. That's not how it works these days. So the show is goofy and entertaining in a in a very Andy Samberg way. I'm, pr you know, I, I may watch more episodes of it just because, like, it makes sense to watch a comedy show about archaeology as an archaeologist. Although I am nervous. I would say I am very thrilled that no ancient aliens showed up, but I am extremely nervous that Elon Musk, or whatever his name is, in the show. I'm very nervous that the offering he made at the end where he found the hat and he like brought it in. I'm very nervous that that like big red room computer system was an ancient, was it was an alien. If it's like a god or something like that, that's fine. That's different. But if it's an alien, then I'm going to be then I'm going to be buttered. But for now, tentatively, um, it gets a zero ancient aliens out of 10, which is actually the highest score. <laughs> that's that's actually top marks. So I'm very proud of that for them. <laughs> what did you guys think as non as non archaeologists watching along? What were your thoughts on this? Did you think it was funny? Did you think it was good? What how does it make you feel about me as an archaeologist? Does it does it skew your perspective of who I am and what I do? If you were to watch that and I wasn't here to say, please don't say that or do that, or this is actually legit. Yeah, we totally tie into that. Like, would that change? Like, how would that make you feel about archaeologists and archaeology as a profession? Because that's kind of like my curiosity with this. Chris's rip. <laughs> Chris's rig digman. <laughs> leave, leave me alone. Uh, I don't have that gut. Look, I am, I am, I am a sleek man. I have a little, I, okay, if I, if I stop holding it in, maybe I, maybe I have a little bit, right, maybe I have a little bit. Now I'm getting body dysmorphia. No, no, I, I got a little bit of a, I got a little bit of a tum-tum, but I've been out of the field for like eight months. So you can't blame me.